Hi, I'm Stacey from Fun Caliber, and today we're discussing the blue economy to honor World Oceans Day. Our rainwater, drinking water, weather, climate, coastlines, much of our food, and even the oxygen in the air we breathe are all ultimately provided and regulated by the world's oceans. On the 5th of December 2008, the UN General Assembly designated the 8th of June as World Oceans Day, a day to celebrate our personal connection to the sea, as well as to raise awareness about the crucial role the ocean plays in our lives and the important ways people can help protect it. In this video, I will cover four main investment opportunities. One, production of sustainable protein from the ocean. Two, maintaining mangrove habitats. Three, increasing offshore wind production. And four, decarbonizing international shipping. But first, let's start with why the ocean is so important. The ocean covers more than 70% of the planet. It produces at least 50% of our oxygen and is home to most of the Earth's biodiversity. It's also key to the global economy. An estimated 40 million people will be employed by ocean-based industries like offshore wind energy, fishing, and shipping by 2030. Together, these industries comprise roughly 3.5 to 7% of global gross domestic product. But, as Deidre Cooper, co-manager of 91 Global Environment, told me, climate change is a key risk for the ocean's health, which has also been subject to destructive marine practices for decades. This has put the fish populations, their natural habitats, and the ocean's potential to continue operating as a natural carbon sink at risk. So, something needs to be done. Thankfully, it seems like a no-brainer. The World Resources Institute suggests that sustainable ocean-based investments will yield benefits at least five times greater than the costs. It's estimated that over the next 30 years, investing two to four trillion dollars globally across several sustainable ocean-based policy interventions would generate a net benefit of eight to 23 trillion dollars. Investment opportunity number one, protection of sustainable protein from the ocean. According to the UN, the ocean is the main source of protein for more than a billion people around the world. Investing in ocean-based food production can take on numerous forms, from investing and improving fisheries and production of ocean aquaculture to more sustainable food sources. As the global population grows, investing in wild fisheries would help provide healthy diets for people while replacing carbon-intensive proteins like beef. John Bennett, manager of Janice Henderson European Focus, told us recently on the Investing on the Go podcast about Maui, salmon farming business in Norway. I would look at Mowi in Norway, which is a salmon farming business, because actually it's a very fast growing source of protein. And of the major food proteins, incidentally, it is actually the most environmentally sustainable. Um, so again, there's noise on certain, on in, there's always noise in investing. There's always optics, but you need to lift the hood. You need to look under the bonnet and actually see what's going on. Salmon versus red meat in terms of the environment, there's only one winner. The World Resources Institute believes that every $1 invested in increasing production of sustainably sourced ocean-based protein could generate $10 in benefits. Investment opportunity number two, maintaining mangrove habitats. Mangroves are the first line of defense for coastal communities. They stabilize shorelines by slowing erosion and provide natural barriers protecting coastal communities from increased storm surge, flooding, and cyclones. Mangroves are complex ecosystems. They serve as breeding, feeding, and nursery grounds for most of the commercial fish thousands of people depend on for their livelihood. Recent studies have also found that mangroves store more carbon dioxide than most other forests, but mangroves are being destroyed and face severe threats due to urbanization, industrialization, discharge of domestic sewage, industrial fluents, and pesticides. As a result, mangroves around the world get depleted to the tune of 2 to 8% annually. According to Noelle Castiles, co-manager of Rathbone Ethical Bond Fund, the blue economy is valued at 1.3 trillion euros. So protecting marine ecosystems and promoting better fishing practices will help economies be more resilient. Protecting coastlines and ecosystems also creates a huge social impact and ensures jobs are protected, particularly in tourism and hospitality industries. Blue bonds are one way to finance such projects. 
The money raised is directed to specific projects with blue credentials, and investors get regular reporting on what the bonds have financed. Noel told us more about blue bonds in an interview last year. Investment opportunity number three, increasing offshore wind production. Offshore wind farms are part of a major push to get more electricity from renewable sources. The team behind First Centier Global Listed Infrastructure believes net zero can only be achieved through a globally concerted effort to decarbonize the power generation sector, electrify the transportation sector, and find cost competitive solutions to decarbonize the hard to abate sectors. Offshore wind power has a role to play in helping deliver this outcome. It can provide energy to highly populated coastal regions where energy needs to be high and land resources are scarce. David Harrison, manager of Rathbone Global Sustainability, said they're seeing a lot of opportunities in wind. So we see lots of opportunities um, in areas such as wind. Um, we've owned a number of wind companies such as Vestas listed in, in Denmark, which has lots of exposure um, in the US anyway. But also um, we've been adding more wind exposure um, through Orsted, which is one of the leading operators. The residual footprint of offshore wind farms is minimal compared to the vast area of the ocean. The impacts are very localized and small when compared to the effects of commercial fishing or the warming of the oceans. Investment opportunity number four, decarbonizing international shipping. Another challenge in the energy sector is international shipping. The industry accounts for roughly 2.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions, and the total cost to decarbonize the sector has been estimated at $1.65 trillion by 2050. The good news is that there are potentially solutions to this, according to David Smith, Senior Investment Director at Aberdeen Standard Investments, including, for example, alternative fuels such as hydrogen, and that shipping and energy companies are working together to make these solutions a reality. Kristen Jin, manager of AXA Framington UK Midcap, told us about two hydrogen stocks, ITM Power and Sears, on the Investing in the Go podcast earlier this year while discussing the opportunities in the AIM market. To maintain the quality of life that the oceans have provided to humankind while sustaining the integrity of their ecosystems, a change will be required in how humans view, manage, and use oceans, seas, and marine resources. To learn more about the blue economy and how you can invest, please visit funcaliber.com and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.